Good morning, guys, and greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> okay. So, you can probably hear, we have a deluge coming down outside right now. It is pouring rain, and you can hear some thunder in the background, I think. You should be able to. And, uh, I haven't even watched anything yet. I think I watched a little bit of, uh, Ross's video this morning on new news and I haven't even watched anything yet. Immediately got this inspiration for this video and this also stems from stuff I've seen last night. I actually didn't get much sleep last night because I found some very interesting information and it's information I cannot share here so if the Lord wills I will do a video and put it on my Brightian and I will link put a link on my uh, community tab later. Um, some of you may already know this information you may have already seen it uh, but it is Kind of surprising and uh it's kind of disturbing and it makes a lot of things that i've things that i've kind of come to conclusions on concerning a particular event that's happening right now that we're having to go through a lot of conclusions that i've come to it it, it explains them it, it actually gives validity to them it makes them make more sense uh, as to why those things could possibly be happening anyway can't get into any details here because New World Order, all this nonsense. Uh, so we're going to focus on the Lord this morning. But if I, if the Lord wills, I'll do a video later and put it up on my bright end. <sighs> Excuse me. And I will link, um, link it here on my community tab. So, um, and I actually left this as a comment on a video one of the videos I was watching last night God speaks and man still fails to listen when God speaks and we have a very specific verse in Psalm 29 that, that, that is going to be our focus but this whole psalm focuses on this when God speaks why do we fail to listen now how does God speak many many people are focused on the, the audible voice of God the Bible gives us clues as to what God says and how he speaks. He speaks in the thunder. So, you know, now that I know that from the word of God, I, I listen to the thunder and, and I regard the thunder in a storm a little differently. See, back in the past, those things meant something different to everybody. They, they paid more attention to things like this. We've learned to just, the world's taught us, it's just a storm, it's a weather event, and that's it. Could there be more to that? I kind of think there is. Jesus said, unless you have childlike faith, you will not see the kingdom of heaven. Part of having childlike faith is reading the Bible and, and it receiving what's in it as just as what it says. God's voice is thunder. And when I hear thunder, it's God's voice. Now that, that sounds kind of academic uh, to some people, but there he goes right there. To me, there's more to it than what we've been taught. And the more I read, the more I listen, the more I, I pay attention to what's being said and, and the little key notes and what people say, uh, especially concerning scripture, the more I start to realize that a lot of this is it's true. And there's more to it than that. So I pay more attention. You notice the pause when the thunder happened. I, I pay more attention. I listen more. Because I don't know what's going to come out of that. Something, another... Another discovery may happen, another revelation. Something interesting may come out and may teach me more. And people may think it's silly, but you know what? I'm not the only one that thinks this. I'm not the only one that believes this because we're reading the Bible and we're realizing. And we're realizing there's more to this than that. We're, we're, we're realizing there's, there's more to all of this than what we've been taught. And I think it's just, it's, I think to me it's just giving God more glory when we take the time to pay more attention and listen more. So, when God speaks, God, God speaks through events in the world. God speaks through family members. He speaks through friends. He speaks through children. He speaks through anybody and everybody. He puts words in people's mouth. When we see that all of this mentioned in the Bible, he speaks through animals. He speaks through you name it. He speaks to these things. 
How do I know he speaks to animals? Well, there is a story in the Old Testament of the prophet who was a lunatic. This donkey spoke to him and said, Hey, man, God's, God used that as a conduit for his voice. This happens everywhere. Little things. The, the, the torments we put ourselves through. God can speak to us through that. The chastisements and, and the uh, uh, mockings and scoffings and, and the stuff that we go through, the, the tribulations that we go through in normal everyday life, God speaks through those. He speaks through everything. When are we going to listen to him? Because every time he speaks, he's telling us something that's going to benefit us, it's going to help us. And it's going to bring him glory. He speaks to us when we're praying. How many of you have prayed and instantly got an answer to your prayer? Yeah, me too. A lot. It's God speaking. He speaks to our heart. We miss it so much. So this morning when we pray, I'm going to pray Psalm 29. And pray, there's a particular verse in here that really stands out. When, God, when we know how God speaks and what he uses to speak through, when we know... We learn to listen for his voice and to listen to the things he's saying. Look at the world events today. Look at the world events today. And look at what's happening and how the nations are responding, how the people are responding. You don't think God is speaking through each one of those events? Absolutely. He's speaking through leaders. He's speaking through everybody. Go back to the story of Moses when he was fighting with uh, Pharaoh. Not only was God speaking through Moses, he was speaking through Aaron. And he was speaking through Pharaoh. He was speaking through everybody. God used Pharaoh, and the Bible says that he used Pharaoh, to perform a particular act uh, towards the uh, Jewish people, towards the Israeli people, towards the towards his, his Israel. He used Moses to respond back to him. The interaction wasn't one-sided. All things are um, come out for good for those he loves. So when you're engaging, let, let's say, for example, you engage somebody on the street in a debate, say it's an atheist, a very angry atheist, in a debate about Christianity. Not only will God communicate to you through that atheist, but he will communicate through you to the atheist. He will communicate through that atheist to, to, to teach you, to strengthen you, to bring you up into a new understanding, to help you understand more. That's why we have to listen to what people say, because we can learn from what they say. We can learn something about them. We can learn something about ourselves. But God will speak through them, and he will speak through us. And a lot of those times when we brush, and I, I've done this, I do this a lot, we brush people off and brush off what they say and don't, don't take the time to really pay attention to what they say, even if it's hateful. Sometimes we can miss stuff. Now, there are some people out there that, that they have no, that there's no debating to them, there's no nothing to them, there's no talking to them. You spend more time, they spend more time cursing than anything else. Technically, that, God's really not speaking to them. But... You can learn something from everybody and everything. I saw an interesting debate. It's an old debate between Ken Owen and someone else. They were talking about... I know, I didn't like that one either. And they were uh, debating creation or evolution. Very interesting debate. And I listened to the other guy's points that he made. He made valid points. But the problem was most of what he said wasn't completely scripturally sound. So, you have to pay attention to what people are saying, and you prove it with the Bible. But I'm watching the interactions. Kent kind of... Kent kind of responded kind of roughly to the guy, and the guy was trying to be as polite as he could. I think Kent could have been a little more respectful to the guy. Um, but the interaction was good, and I could see where God was speaking both directions. He was speaking through the other guy, and he was speaking through Kent. When are we going to listen to God? When are we going to listen when He speaks? When are we going to pay attention when He speaks? 
When are we going to take the time to break it down and, and listen closely and try to learn more, not only about ourselves, but about the other person, about the event that's happening? Why is there flooding in Utah? Why is there flooding in China? Why is, there, why is there flooding everywhere? And at the same time, there's fires everywhere. Why is all that happening? God's tell, talking to us. He's sending us a message. He's saying, my people, come out of her. Separate from this world. Come to me in prayer. I will heal you. Come to me in repentance and I will forgive you. Come to me where it's safe and I will protect you. Everything going on about the vaccine. People losing their mind over this. God is saying, listen to me, don't listen to them. Pay attention to me, don't pay attention to them. Come to me, don't go to them. They're trying to get you to be attached to this world. I'm trying to get you separated. Let it, let it go and leave it alone. Come to me, I will provide everything you need. And his word fully supports everything I just told you. That's what God is saying. God is saying, you see these things? He's taking his hand, he's sweeping it across. You see all these things? You see all these horrible things? You see all this death? You see all this destruction? I'm talking to the world. World, my son is about to arrive. If you're not ready, you're going to be left here. You think this is bad? It's about to get a lot worse. It's about to get so bad that you won't even, it will drive you crazy, yet you won't go insane. It will, it will try to kill you, yet you won't die. Your eyes have never seen destruction that's about to befall this world. And that will be my full judgment. My cup of wrath, unfiltered and um, undiluted. Full strength. Overflowing. He's been saving that wrath for over 2,000 years. God is telling everyone, listen up and look up. The time is at hand. People keep asking, are we in the tribulation? Are we in the tribulation? Well, is what's going on happening worldwide? Well, no, there's some other countries and everything seems like it's okay. Hmm, but it's not the tribulation, is it? It's a worldwide event. Why are we asking these questions if we know the truth contained within his word? We're not listening to God. We're not listening. We need to listen. People are asking about the rapture. Oh, I guess the rapture is post tribulation Then evidently your faith wasn't in the rapture or in his word. Your faith wasn't in the truth. You're not listening. Because if you listen, you know all you need to know about that, the rapture event. You know what God's word says about the rapture event. And you're not going to listen to man. And you're not going to trust man. You're going to trust God and his word instead. We must listen to him. Because he is talking so loud to us right now. He is talking so loud. Whatever befalls us, we deserve. When we listen to God, He brings us through it. Let us pray this morning. Let us give our God the glory. Let us praise Him. Let us give thanks to Him. And while we're at it, let us ask Him to help us hear his voice. Father, we come before you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ to give you praise, honor, and glory, to lift you up and sing praises unto your holy name, to give thanks to you for your amazing love, for your peace, for your guidance, for your teachings, for your chastisement, and for your punishment inflicted onto us as sons and daughters, for the judgment that you are pouring out a little here and a little there on the earth, the warnings you are giving the whole world, the love that you have so deep that you're warning the world, proving your word in ev at every corner of the world, in every aspect, in every way, showing your power, showing your kingship, showing your intent. And yet we don't listen, Father. We don't listen. We don't pay attention to what you're saying. We don't look at what's going on and go, hmm, I wonder if that applies. I wonder how that applies. I wonder if this is God speaking. And then go to your word and prove it. We never prove it. Father, 
First of all, I thank you for your word, your amazing word that we can trust. And I see people still fighting, fighting so hard to make it out like your word is nothing. And it is a lie. Your word is everything. Father, please, please put a desire for your word in all of our hearts. Please help us understand the truth. And Father, please help us listen for your voice. And help us to learn to discern your voice and what it's telling us. And I'm not just talking about an audible voice. I'm talking about your voice in everything. Help us discern your voice and what it's saying in everything we see in here. And every person we talk to. Everywhere that your voice can emanate from, every conduit that you can speak through, help us to learn to listen for your voice and then take what's being said and prove it, just like you told us to. To honor you by listening to you, to honor you by testing and, and proving everything being said and shown. To use your word the way it was intended to be used. There's a passage in the New Testament that says, and these were more noble than those in... I forget the town, the city. And I'm trying, I can't remember the, I can't remember the city. But they were more noble in, the, in that they searched the scriptures for everything, to prove everything. Why don't we do that? Father, make us to do that. Make us to obey your will and follow your guidance. Listen to your warnings and come to you for all the things we need. We keep going to the world. We keep turning back to the world. What's wrong with us? Father, please don't, please don't let us fail you. Make us to do your will and to serve you and to glorify you. You have set me on fire lately. You've led me to many, many wonderful revelations lately. Shown me new information. Exposed me to things that I never was exposed to before. You've changed me so much. I have to give thanks for that. Uh, Father, I pray that for all my brothers and sisters, that you awaken in them more desire than you've awakened me. That you show them more than you've shown me. That you teach them more than you've taught me. <coughs> because the glory goes to you. This morning, Father, I'd like to pray Psalm 29. Praise to God in his holiness and majesty. Give unto the Lord, O you mighty ones, Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due to his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is over many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. Yes, the Lord splinters the cedars of Lebanon. He makes them also skip like a calf. Lebanon and Syrian, like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord divides the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the deer give birth and strips the forest bare. And in his temple, everyone says, Glory! The Lord sat enthroned at the flood, and the Lord sits as king forever. The Lord will give strength to his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. Amen. Father, what a psalm. I, I, st I love your psalms. still love these psalms. I love to pray them because they are so poetic. I cannot be so poetic. I, I'm not a wordsmith. I can't articulate in this way. But I do know that when the time is right, you give the Holy Spirit uh, you give the other, tell the, old, the Holy Spirit what to give to me. And the Holy Spirit gives me such wonderful words and such powerful prayers. Father, I pray we listen to what you're saying. Not only from your Bible, but from everything that's happening. Everyone that's speaking. Everything is. I listen to some people speak and I hear you. And this person might not even be a Christian. And I hear you. And within what they're saying is warnings. Such important warnings to pay attention, to look, to listen, to turn to you for truth. How is it the rest of the world seems to struggle with this? Father, break our, excuse me, break our dependence on this world, please. So that we turn to you and trust in you for everything. May you receive all the glory. May you receive all the praise. May all of your people worship you with no holding back. 
Hey, everyone, glorify you in what they do every day, when what they do with their hands, when what they, what they say with their voice, with what they believe with their heart, and they glorify you and praise you and give thanks to you for all these things because you are deserving of these things. Because you alone, our God, are all-powerful and have done the ma amazing, amazing works you've done. Earn you those those wonderful praises and that wonderful worship. You just being you, the God of love and truth, make you worthy of these wonderful praises and thanksgivings. I thank you today for this rain. I thank you by intercession. I give thanks for everyone who hasn't given thanks for this rain. You have blessed this land richly. Thank you, Father, for your mercy and grace. Thank you for your great love. Please continue to speak to us. Continue to teach us. Please don't give up on us. Please don't give up on us. Please protect us and watch over us and show us the truth, your truth. In Jesus' mighty name, we bless you and praise you, honor you and glorify you. And in Jesus Christ's mighty name, we pray. Amen. Thank you guys for joining me for morning prayer, much shorter than the one was yesterday. But guys, God is speaking, and he has been speaking for some time now. And we're not listening. And we desperately need to listen. We desperately need to take his counsel. Go to the Bible and find where he's talked about that. Take my counsel. Listen to what I'm telling you. And you will prosper. If we take his counsel, we will prosper. We will do well. It's an amazing thing to realize when you're hearing God talk. And it's even more amazing to understand what he's telling you. And you take that and apply it. Watch everything around you change. I'm seeing it in my own life. And it's astounding. And I will continue to listen as much as I can. And I hope and pray he answers this prayer and helps us listen more. I love you guys. I bless you all in Jesus' name. And I will see you in the next video.